Hello everybody, I am Jedi Jack Penguin and welcome to another LEGO Harry Potter review. So today I'm really, really, really excited to be looking at set number 4751 Harry and the Marauders map. This set includes 106 pieces and originally retailed for $9.99 back in the year 2004. I just recently bought this set $2.50 over the original retail price on eBay, brand new and sealed, I, I just can't believe that I got such a great deal on this set. This is one of the few 2004 Harry Potter sets that I really, really wanted in my collection. And I'm so excited to be looking at it today. Of course, there's still plenty to go when it comes to collecting all of the other sets, which are still just really, really expensive. So getting right into this and looking at the box art, we have that classic 2004 look where you have Prisoner of Azkaban Harry in the corner. You have your Harry Potter logo in that more silvery color and that blue side art right there with the regular stuff off the side main picture of the set front and center we also still have the price tag right there from toys r us back in the day ten dollars for this set really unbelievable and then from the very back you get a look at some of the other sets available at the time in 2004 and some other looks at this set, some alternate builds and whatnot. So yeah, that's all that I have to say. We also get the push tab from the very bottom if you're interested in that. So let's open this up. Included in the box, we have two unnumbered bags as well as one loose brick piece. We also get your instructions as well as an advertisement for the Lego magazines at the time. So let's look at those. Looking at the magazine advertisement, we get it in two different languages as well as this sign-up sheet from the back. It is a fold-out pamphlet that you would mail in that section right there. And it just gives you a little bit of information about the magazines during the time period. Now looking at the instructions for the set, we mimic the front of the box. The very back we get this really nice advertisement featuring Harry, Ron, and Hermione from the time, as well as some Dementors in the background. And this also mimicked one of the video games that they had up on lego.com at the time. I remember playing that back in the day. I didn't play it back in 2004, though I did end up stumbling upon it on the internet sometime in my childhood. I remember playing that so much when I was a kid. We also get the quick win information, one of the alternate builds for this set, which leads to an advertisement showing all of these really amazing classic 2004 sets. The only one that I have a review of currently is the Night Bus from 2004. You guys can also check out my comparison for that set. But all of these sets I would love to get in the future. I just acquired the 2001 Hagrid's Hut, so it would be very nice to get that so then I can do a comparison. Maybe I'll do that once we get another rendition come 2022 or 2023 or something like that. This set I would love to get. That set I would love to get. Clock Tower would be very nice to compare to the 2019 version. Would be really cool to get the motorized version, though that one's quite expensive. Shrieking Shack is the standout right there with the older Hogsmeade build, which, you know, 2021 definitely blows out of the park. And then this is another really amazing set for the time period, Lupin's Class, where you get the Boggart Snape and Neville's first appearance in LEGO form. Really, really cool and solid wave of sets back in the day in 2004. Would really love to get some of these in the future. And then finally we get some play features leading to the final overall model. So yeah, that's all that I have to say for the instructions. So let's build up this set. I'm really excited. Looking at our very first minifigure included, we have Harry Potter. He comes with two accessories, one being the stick piece for the wand, which now has a translucent cone at the top to represent some magic. And we also get a 2x2 two two tile print of the Marauders map that looks very similar to something that we also saw in 2010-2011. So that's just one thing I did want to point out. Looking at the rest of his minifigure compared to the older light gray that we saw back in 2001 through 2003. Now we have a dark gray color used for the outfit. We get the printing from the front, no back printing still. Light flesh tone for the time period, which is revolutionary. Really cool that LEGO started doing that in 2004, where you can also see the 2001 through 2003 facial expression just represented on that flesh tone. 
We also get an under the neck accessory of this purple cape, which I'm kind of confused why they gave him a purple cape, but they did that back in 2001. So it's fine that they're just continuing that continuity somewhat there. And we also have that classic hair piece for Harry back in the day. We also have the second rendition of Professor Severus Snape, who is also exclusive to this set with a little bit of a brighter purple color than the one that we saw in 2001-2002. Now when it comes to this version of Snape, we still have that radioactive glow in the dark head that I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to show, but I'll try and show it if I can. Here's just a quick picture of that if you're interested in seeing it. We get the same hair piece that we saw back in 2001, and no back printing, just a cape for the under the neck accessory. So yeah, that's all that I have to say for Professor Snape. And finally, for our last minifigure, we have the statue of the One-Eyed Witch, which can bring you to Honeydukes. I really love that LEGO represented this statue with a minifigure. One thing that I think is missing, of course, is a facial expression to go along with it. Maybe something like related to the books, at least, even though the statue in the movie, I'm pretty sure, doesn't have a face. I'm not 100% sure, but still very nice that we get printing on the skirt piece leading up to the torso. You can just take a look at that overall. Just to represent the robes of the character and we also get the walking stick that's not supposed to be a wand and that full dark gray color the new dark gray not the old dark gray that we saw in 2001 through 2003 so yeah that's all that i have to say for the one-eyed witch statue now taking a look at this section of hogwarts this set is supposed to connect to some of the other 2004 hogwarts expansions including the clock tower and lupin's classroom i believe i'm not sure how these are all supposed to connect because it doesn't show it really in the instructions, but at least that's the vibe that this set gives me. So starting off from the very bottom, we get this spider connected via a stud off the side. We get some brown down here just to represent more of like an underground area where we get this large brick piece as the base and take a look down here. There really isn't anything going on, but there is enough room if you want to stand a minifigure like you can put Harry down here in this general area which i do appreciate that there is enough room for a minifigure to stand because this is supposed to be the passageway to get to honeydukes that we also get along with the shrieking shack now when it comes to the build of the one-eyed witch statue you get your minifigure placed on top of one of those two by two plate pieces and you get more of a tan area for the character to stand on we also get some torches from the very back and then from the actual back of the build, you get this area where we have one of these Technic pieces that you can just easily move off to the side and to drag back this part to actually gain access to where the statue is. Also, just like back in 2001 through 2002, LEGO really loves adding those hidden features into these Hogwarts expansion sets. So right here, we have a printed 2x2 two two tile on this sand green color. The printing is a little bit more off to this side than I would have liked to see, but it's fine either way. You get a very nice shine to the print as well, and it's a very nice inclusion if you didn't own it already. Now, as I said, once you flip that one little Technic piece, you are able to grab from the very back of the statue and bring it back to reveal the passage down to get to Honeydukes. Overall, I think it uses a pretty simple mechanism. You can see down there how it can slide back and forth, and you can see that we also get these pieces to make that work. You can see how it can go in and out like that. And just another fun fact, if you are interested, the password in order to unlock this secret is Descendium. So overall, for $10 back in the day, I think that this set was a pretty good deal. You get your very first flesh tone variant of Harry Potter, even though the purple cape doesn't really make too much sense, it's fine. And you even get a print of the Mortars map for the very first time in LEGO form. You get a new version of Professor Snape, who I think is slightly better than the 2001 variant, though they have improved upon him by giving him a flesh tone facial expression in the future. And we even get a really cool reference of the Marauders map stat statue the one-eyed witch really cool to see that represented in lego form and overall the play features for this set work out very nicely and it even goes well with the honeydukes build that we get along with the shrieking shack at the time so yeah that's pretty much all that i have to say for this video leave your thoughts down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this set also remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so every time i upload a new video so yeah that's it for now and i will see you next time bye <music>